What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Dwarven Skykeep. This is a title that's actually kind of interesting. I, I like what they're going for here. And while I think there's a lot of room for kind of like polish and getting the game a little bit tighter, I do think that this demo shows a lot of interesting attributes that I think people are going to be into. So what is Dwarven Skykeep? I always do this. Every single video I start out by talking about what I like and I don't like, and then I actually get around to talking about what the game actually is. I really need to learn how to flip that tendency over onto its other side. Uh, but anyways, Dwarven Skykeep, what is it? In Dwarven Skykeep, you are a human mage that is working on behalf of a dwarf clan that is trying to expand out of their mountain hold and take over various resources on the surface while a goblin and wizard invasion is happening. You will escort them up there, and your job is to magically create weird physics-defying towers that have various rooms and various functions while defending that tower from being attacked while you attempt to accomplish your goal. And I think that the game is pretty cool. So we're going to dive on in today. We're going to take 25 minutes, take a look at it, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If you wanted to play this game, the demo is freely available. You can check that out on Steam. The link is down below in the description. And then on top of that, you can also find links to my Discord and also to my Twitch stream down there in case you wanted to hang out live. I frequently play the games from the channel here in longer form over on Twitch if I wanted to get a bigger look. We've done it with Gloomwood, we've done it with some other games, and so that tends to be my modus operandi, I suppose. Uh, let's go ahead and dive on in. I've played for a couple hours prior to the recording of this video, so I'm going to take you in past all the tutorializing, and I'm just going to explain how everything works on my own. Uh, let's go ahead, and I think this is my save right here that I've been playing. So it's day one, and we have to defend from the goblins. We have to kill three enemies. I'm going to pause the game. The game does not have a classic styled push pause. Uh, when you pause the game, it basically brings up these menus right here. I would suggest, actually, that they let you just pause the game and plan, in all honesty. Don't even bring up this menu right here. Just pause the game and let the player sit and think about what they want to do. I think push pause would actually be a really good addition to this game. But for now, since push pause doesn't exist, I'm going to explain through the options menu how this game functions. So, this game is a card-based game. There's kind of this idea going around that I hate card-based games. And while I am a little bit tired of card-based games, I want to make it I want to put it on the record. I I don't mind card-based games as long as they're trying to do something interesting and as long as they are kind of breaking away from the slay the spire formula. The problem is the vast majority of games nowadays are just energy-based card games that are directly like Slay the Spire but with one tiny twist. But if a game has cards and it's going in its own direction, I'm totally okay with card games. It's just I have sort of this Slay the Spire fatigue going on that I just can't seem to shake. And so anyways, this is a card-based game. You have various cards. These cards, as you can see down here, can be empty rooms that you can place. Your dwarves will build those. They can be facilities that fill in those empty rooms where you can produce different items that are also cards that are in your deck. So, for example, right here, this is a carpenter's workshop. It allows us to build upgrades, things like doors, bulkheads that stop the enemy from getting inside, torches so that people can work throughout the night without getting the darkness penalty, stuff like that. We've also got a stock room right here. The stock room is kind of an underrated room. What it does is it allows us to discard a card and get a new card if we don't like anything in our hand in exchange for like six hours worth of time rummaging through boxes, and that's a dwarf card right there that we can play to get a dwarf. Dwarf. Dwarves do all the building, they do all the manufacturing. Uh, your character pretty much does nothing but cast spells and basically give them overlord commands about what you want them to do. But the dwarves have all the agency here outside of spell magic and casting. And so anyways, we have our HP in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. If that goes down to zero, we lose the mission. Top right hand corner of the screen, we have the time of day and what day it is. The game gets worse the longer it takes. It's got a little bit of a sandboxy vibe there. You can take a long time to complete your objective, but it's going to get harder if you do. And so anyways, you generally want to go after that. These question marks that you're seeing right here, these question marks are items. If we build a room that encompasses that tile right there, we can search the tile for a free item. And so anyways, let's get started. We need to build ourselves a castle. So I'm going to go ahead and build right there, and I'm going to deploy my first dwarf. And what you'll see is that he'll climb up to the next level, and he will start building that room. Good stuff. Uh, this room right here is more than likely going to have to be a stock room because we actually started out with a really, really, really bad hand. Uh, we don't have a lot of things that we can build with. We don't have a lot of stuff we can fiddle with. And so anyways, this room is more than likely going to be an early stock room, which is not the play that I want to make, but it's the play that I'm going to make. 
Uh, we did get another room right there, and it's not a bad room. We can put it right there. So... With our draw, that's not too terrible. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Our stock room will be right there. Uh, you can't really manually tell the dwarves what you want them to work on. They kind of just pick something and go for it. So he's decided that he's going to do the stock room first, which is perfectly fine. And then he's going to go for that room right there when he gets done. Now, our character is sitting on a throne. The throne is an important room because the throne allows you to add renovations and buildings anywhere that you want. If you're not sitting on the throne, you have to be adjacent to the room or inside the room where you want to build the thing. And so the throne room, you've kind of got to decide when you want to run around the castle and when do you want to build stuff. Uh, I'm going to use this room real fast, and we are going to discard... That U block right there. That U block is hot garbage. We're only going to be able to work on shuffling for about an hour because he's going to get done with his room and we're going to need to work on other stuff. But uh, it keeps your progress. I would like it if they added a meter basically inside the wall of the room that told you how far along you are. Uh, that dwarf is done right there. There's actually not a lot that I can do here. Let's go ahead and we'll do a carpentry workshop right there and I'll continue rifling through here. Although... Things are not lining up very well for us. I've got a bad feeling about this map. Uh, we're not going to get... I don't think we get attacked on the first night, but realistically, I would like to have a magic spell or something to kill goblins before they get here. That would make this whole thing a lot simpler. The game has a fantastic soundtrack. I think the game sounds great. Uh, they've got a very, very Danny Elfman vibe that they've gone for. I'm going to tell him to work in the carpentry workshop and just manufacture and upgrade real fast. And then over here, we've got a mana crystal. That's good. Uh, if we meditate next to the mana crystal, we get mana. And there are certain rooms that will allow us to trade mana for magic spells. So we've got one piece of the puzzle right now towards turning ourselves into Kel'Thuzad on top of the tower, hurling fireballs down on an orcish army. You know what I mean? Like, it's just that badass opening to the original vanilla World of Warcraft. Uh, we do have another room we can build right here, and I would suggest that we build said room. I'll put it right there. Uh, he's almost done with his upgrade over on this side. You can hold down the F key if you want to make the game go faster. Uh, I'm going to throw out that card right there. And honestly, we're not really doing a whole lot for right now. I'm going to come down to this layer right here and grab the item. He produced a sword. That's actually not terrible. Here. If you give a dwarf a sword, it means that when you come under attack, you can assign them to guard duty to hold off enemies. And so anyways, that gives us at least one means to fight the enemy. And when it comes to my dwarves, I want them extra mean. I want their meanness to be greatly ratified. All right, let's go ahead and swap that card out. There we go. We actually got an okay room right there. I don't hate it. Uh, can I drop that room on top of this one? I don't recall if this one... Yeah, this one did have a hatch, actually. Oh, but there's no door on that side right there, so we have to knock out that wall. There are various items you can get out of your deck. Right now, I'm kind of, like, fishing, and I'm sort of hoping uh, that we get a crowbar in a workshop pretty soon. Because if we had a crowbar in a workshop, we could knock out walls, basically. Uh, go make the mana crystal. Perfect. Looks good. We got our first mana right there, which is great. Hey, there's the room right there that lets us conjure fireballs. All right. Fireball. Fireball. All right, go ahead and make the room with the fireballs, please. And then we've got an omnidirectional room right there. I can't really place it anywhere except for underneath us. Underneath us is risky because you may have noticed the game has weather patterns. And if it rains, everything underground floods if you don't have hatches on top of these rooms right here. So the game does actually have like some depth here. Like it does have some thought to it. Like I find myself avoiding building underground as much as possible because of flooding. And at this point in the game, we haven't unlocked the pump yet. We get the pump later. Come on, get done there, buddy. There we go. All right. I need you to put another room in right there. This room right here, we will insert our mana. And in 12 hours, we will have the ability to cast a fireball. We also got the workshop right there, which is great because the workshop gives you a whole bunch of tools that allow you to knock out walls, create connections, put out fires, repair damaged rooms, all that kind of good stuff. And the attack is coming. It's coming tonight, in fact. We're not going to have our fireball off in time. And so anyways, my dwarf does have a weapon. Unfortunately, if the enemy doesn't come from the left, we have no way to get out to the right because there's no door right here. So I can only really put my guys on patrol out to the left. And so like, we did get an item right there, and it's another dwarf. Very nice. All right, somebody build the workshop up here. And... 
Well, don't do another construction. That'd be a bad idea. But an attack should be forthcoming, I think. They're coming for our beards. They're coming from our ale. They're coming from our gold. They're, they're coming to take everything from us, and we must stop them with dwarfish vigor. All right, so the workshop is ready to go up here. Uh, I would like to... Oh, we do have the pumps. Okay, I thought I did not have the pump unlocked, but apparently when I rolled back my save, I kept all the things that I unlocked. Very, very nice. Okay, so I can build downwards. I'm not even that upset about it anymore. Where's the enemy coming from? They come from the right. We're just going to have to take the hit. Go there. Yeah, go over there. There you go, buddy. Fight that goblin. There we go. The goblin has been slain. We've got magic spells coming pretty soon. Oh, the goblin dropped loot. Let's go get his loot. Uh, we got a torch. The torch is an interesting item in this game because it allows you to illuminate a room. That allows your dwarves to produce stuff in that room even when it's dark. And so we'll go ahead and put that right there. Yeah, let's make our tower make no sense whatsoever. I think that's like a big part of the fun of this game is just creating a tower that is utterly divorced from any idea of normalcy. We've got an hour until our first fireball is done conjuring inside of here, so that'll be good. And he already installed the torch. Go ahead and produce a water bucket for me up here. That sounds good. Maybe drop a mine shaft right there too to get down below the earth. There's our fireball, so we can protect ourselves now from enemies if they decide to come a-knocking. The fireball is incredibly powerful and basically instantly right. kills an enemy. <laughs> We've also got our water bucket up here in case the goblins set anything on fire. I need three more hours until I can pick up my... Three more hours until I can pick up my mana crystal. We've got a downward block right there. I think I can only put that, like, right here. So I will. Oops, I accidentally clicked on something that I didn't want to click on. Uh, we do have a room right here. What this room does is it allows us to get nature manipulation spells, so we can actually change the weather. Uh, if we want to flood out a bottom room because it's full of enemies, we can do that by conjuring a rainstorm. If we want to stop a fire inside of our base, we can conjure a rainstorm. If we're being attacked by flying enemies, we can summon the wind to blow them away. Uh, lots of fun little utilities you can play around with in this game that I think actually make it pop. And honestly, for a demo, this game actually has a bit of girth to the demo, if I'm being honest. So for mana, it looks like I can get Wall Breaker. I need that. Let's go ahead and we'll get Wall Breaker for right now. And then I'm going to use Wall Breaker to break that wall right there. I do want some improvements, though, so I'm going to queue them up for improvements over there. We've got a tavern. If I build a tavern, we get another dwarf. So I feel like that's a solid play as well. So let's get a third dwarf right there, and then maybe I'll think about making another sword. We don't know what we're going to get out of the carpentry the carpentry workshop. It could be like anything, and so we just got to kind of wait and see. But I would like another wall breaker spell. That would be great. Uh, there we go. Hold down the F key to let them like kind of do their construction a little bit faster. And we've got another dwarf. All right, Brandmond has joined us. Welcome, Brandmond. I hope you enjoy my glorious tower, my MC Escher construction that makes no sense at all and gives everyone vertigo. All right. Dude, I had vertigo for like a year because I didn't have health care, but my ear was clogged, and I didn't know my ear was clogged because it didn't feel like it was clogged, dude. Worst experience ever. Uh, we got another torch. I'm okay with another torch. Probably drop another room right there, too. Uh, we have a goblin coming from the right, and he is a saboteur. We're going to shoot a fireball at him. One adjustment that I think they could make to the spell casting is that the spells cast too fast. Uh, they play too many frames. What I'd like to see from the fireball is... Basically, it goes, and it goes into slow-mo, and it shows your wizard, like, casting, basically, and, like, chanting words and doing, like, a little animation and zooms in on him, and then he releases the fireball, and then the camera follows the fireball until it hits the goblin or the wizard or whatever it is that you're killing, and then from there, it looked a little bit better. Like, that right there kind of lacked, it lacked impact. It, it, it lacked spectacle, and I get the feeling that wizards are big fans of spectacle. 
Like, if you are the kind of person that is naturally inclined to spectacle, I feel like you choose wizard when you play D&D because you get to make the big boom booms. And so, actually, it'd be really, really cool if when the fireball hit him, it kicked up dust behind him, kind of like Dragon Ball Z style, and the flames hit, meld to the little, meld to the sprite, and then blow out around the sides of him and kick up dust behind him. Like, yeah, dude, that'd be the stuff right there. Uh, something like what Legend of Keepers does, for example. Legend of Keepers is one of those games that, like, it has, like, its own little issues, but uh, the game is utterly fantastic to look at. It is a really, really fun game to look at. I think I need another wall breaker spell. I've come for you, man. Oh no, yeah, go over there and take your rally point. Go kill that wizard. We're being attacked by a rival wizard. Luckily, uh, the wizard's great weakness is battle axes to the sternum. So, you know, we have that covered. At the end of every single match, you're going to get kind of like a cheesy little pop-up where the wizard uh, basically is like, You've done such a good job, my friend. Uh, <laughs> and so anyways, the game does have a storyline. You can leave your house and you can wander around a dwarvish city in between uh, various missions. I haven't really followed the storyline too much. The storyline is fairly standard fair stuff. Uh, it's basically like the dwarves need a thing. Go and get that thing. Otherwise, you're a terrible person. And so that's pretty much the way that it plays out. You can't have conversations with people all over town. You do get paid uh, for every single mission that you complete for the dwarves, and you can spend that money at these various vendors around here. There's like a blacksmith over here. Uh, there's, you know, this lady that sells you random cards. There's a tavern. A lot of these buildings are, like, interactable. Apparently there's a thief over here. Apparently he's a rogue. And a rogue was a thief prior to 3rd edition, while in 2nd edition, a rogue was a bard archetype. In the 5th edition, however, the thief became a subtype of the rogue. The game does have a sense of humor, by the way. This is not a game that takes itself seriously. Uh, but anyways, the storyline here has introduced me to a relic vendor where I can buy various relics. Apparently, the bucket allows me to firefight by hand, so that's actually pretty good to have. And then over here... If we have these water-type boots, uh, we start out with a pump as well. Uh, so anyways, this allows you to kind of like eliminate some of the randomness that happens in the game, and it allows you to tailor your deck a little bit, uh, which we'll see in just a second when I take a new mission, because you do actually get to cultivate and fiddle with your deck. Normally, fiddling with your deck on the internet is reserved for very, very specific sites. But in this game and on YouTube, I'm going to make an exception. Uh, we do have a forge over here. Sometimes the blacksmith has stuff that you can buy from him over here. I think this is like the miner's guild or something like that. Uh, this guy has a mission for us, but it's like a challenge. The game does have branching missions. Uh, so, like, at this point, we have two choices of mission that we can take next. It doesn't appear to me as though there's any type of overarching, like, narrative map that you can check and see like how many branching paths you've picked. But sometimes they'll give you optional missions and those optional missions can be kind of interesting because they, they do certain things. Like they'll be like, beat this mission without having a workshop. Beat this mission, but doors have been removed from your deck, and you have three days, and like you have a time limit, and like stuff like that. Either way, we'll just go on to the next mission so that you can check it out. Let's get down in here. We travel through mirrors, by the way, in order to find our missions. Uh, right here is where you customize the stuff that is going to be in your deck. You can eliminate cards. You can keep cards. You can do whatever you want. I've removed a repair hammer because I just didn't feel like I, I used repair hammers very often. I just didn't feel that important or pertinent to me, and I kept getting them to come up while I needed a water bucket or something. Come to think of it, I don't actually know how I equip... My boots that I just bought. I don't know. It's interesting to think about. Uh, we do have a mine over here, which is pretty cool. What does that do? Needed in level. Oh, they give you one for free. Okay, so I've got like an extra one. Gotcha. That sounds good. I'll probably eliminate one of those from my hand. You don't really need two of that room. The weather manipulation room. Like, it's so rare and niche that I actually use a weather manipulation room that I don't think that I need it. I would like to get some more taverns, though, so that I can get more dwarves out quicker. Ah, there we go. That's where I select my relics. Okay, so we do have the firefight in hand. Good. Uh, so we need to collect an earth essence. That basically means we have to send a... We have to send a guy down in order to dig in the mines. Ready Let's get our start. dwarf up and running. <laughs> I... Suppose... I'll build that right there, I guess. 
We do need to get down below the surface. But let's get our first couple rooms built out, and then we'll decide what we want to do from there. We aren't getting any of the omnidirectional rooms, which is kind of a bummer. Let's go ahead and get a second dwarf deployed. I can put that room right there, so that's what I'm going to do. Let me get my second dwarf. And we do have a tavern, which is really nice. Unfortunately, that lower level is now going to flood until we get a pump, because it's raining, and we don't have doors on our building. Yeah, so as you can see, you can see the water dripping. Oh, a portal appeared. Beautiful. Okay, well, we found a card down here, which allows us to drain the area out. If I could knock out a wall... Uh, the bird is coming to deliver us mana, by the way, in case you're wondering. Oh, he delivered us a tool. Nice. Okay, uh, I'm going to knock out that wall right there. Someone should go do that. The portal disappeared. Okay, I guess it was just like uh, it, the portal was lying, all right? The portal was lying to us. We have more rooms. I'm going to put in a stock room over here, and I'm going to put in a... I honestly don't know what I'm going to put in a of. Oh no, we're under attack. That's unfortunate. None of my dwarves have swords. What's he going to do? Meet your doom? What's he doing? He's waving his rod! All right, warehouse is done. Over here. I think I'm going to shuffle that card. Just kind of see what we get, although I shouldn't have idle dwarves here. Go ahead and build my mine. Oh, he struck it with lightning. Beautiful. Okay, we need a dwarf to put out the fire. There we go. The fire has been put out. Apparently, this brick building is highly conductive and able to be burned down. Just the way she goes. All right, a little bit more scavenging done right there. Another portal is open. Goblins are going to come out of that portal. Uh, our cards are going very, very poorly right now. They haven't given me a single thing that I actually want. And that's not great. That's not good. Oh, the portal moved around. Okay, this room is broken and requires repairs. Bummer. I don't have a repair card because I took it out of my deck. Apparently now I need that card. It's okay, we only have to last for one day, and then he will dig out the thing that we're supposed to find for the mission. Like, the game tends to be pretty short in that regard. Let's continue, just kind of rifling through here. There's nothing, I mean, I guess I could build a carpentry workshop. Yeah, go ahead and build a carpentry workshop. All right, we got a new room right there. That's fine by me. We can put it in up there, which is probably what I'll do. That has also given us a blacksmith facility, which is actually something we need right now. Uh, the carpentry workshop is done. I would like to assign, maybe I'll put another pub down here in the bottom so I can get a third dwarf. I don't know, but the game is contemplative. Like, I do find that it has a very smooth flow of play. And like RNG taken out of the uh, like equation, the game is actually pretty easy to think. Oh, there's my third dwarf right there. So I guess I don't have to worry about that. All right, make me a blacksmith up here. And then over here, you are going to make me a tavern, I guess. And then over here, we will have somebody work on upgrades. And then up here, I would like, yeah, a water bucket's fine. I may need to put out a fire soon. Yeah, we're being attacked by a lot of wizards, so putting out fires would, oh, dude, he melt. It's gonna collapse. No, it's not. Everything's gonna be okay. Everything's going to be fine. Don't stress. Everything's going to be all good. Uh, do you guys want to come up here and work on this? I would like it if you guys would come up here and work on this. There's four of you, and none of you are working on the thing known as this. No, no, no. Uh, let me see if maybe i got to reset it. Oh, they don't want to work in there because there's no torch, despite the fact that there's a burning forge right there that would supply at least some light. Never mind. Uh, this is not good. This is bad. Our base is going to burn till morning. Yeah, I need to put out that fire, like, right now. That's what I need. Eh, give me that. And so, in a certain respect, this game is kind of a crisis management game as well. 
There we go. Go ahead and throw that on in there. They'll go put out the fire. We'll have another dwarf work on another bucket of water. Like, honestly, we haven't lost yet. We've only got 12 hours until they dig the thing out of the ground that we're supposed to be digging out of the ground for this mission, which is an Earth Essence. Basically, this is, the game is a little bit over-tutorialized, in my opinion. Like, the first big batch of, like, five to seven missions are basically tutorials. They have, like, a tutorial level for every new building that you get. Some people are going to like that. Some people are not. I personally would actually prefer that the game have, like, a sandbox mode that just cuts me loose and lets me build a tower as big and tall as possible while giving me randomized objectives to work on that give you bonuses and allow you to develop out your deck. I think a mode like that, that's something that I would dump just absurdly huge amount of hours into. But the narrative mode is pretty cool, too. It's perfectly fine. It's just I tend personally to prefer more sandboxy things. Uh, we put out all the fires. Continue manufacturing things. Uh, I need to rifle through boxes over here because I don't have any rooms that I can put down, unfortunately. And I would like to have those rooms. Let's go collect our blacksmithing shop output and put them on another one. Just so we have a little bit of everything. I'm going to keep on working on this. And there's a dynamite goblin coming. Oh, God. Oh, just in time, dude. Just in time. Incredible speed. That's, that's, I've been told, yes. I've been, I've been told that by, by various people with whom I've shared relationships. Uh, let's see here. Try on different artifacts. The effect will be huge. I vouch. Oh, I can mess with artifacts over there, too, in my little wardrobe. I do like how interactable the world is. It's very, very fun and enjoyable. What's the new mission that we've got going on? I want to see what they want me to do now. All right, you need to have these cards in your deck. Ask the fortune teller, so I need a mirror. Okay, let's go buy it then, and we'll see what it's got going on. But yeah, this is Dwarvish Skykeep. I think it's a very, very unique, interesting idea for a game. It's much more of a, like, I consider it to be much more of kind of a visualized animated board game than anything else. Uh, something like, you know, Castles of Mad King Ludwig or something like that. And like, it kind of, it kind of reminds me of that. So if you're like a fan of that kind of gameplay, this is definitely one of those games that I think will grab you. And I think it'll definitely keep you interested. But yeah, my main observations are that there's little polish things that should be worked on. Uh, so what does this do right here? Mirrors work automatically underground at night when the weather is bad, mirrors don't work. Uh, the sun spark catching speed. Oh, it catches a resource of some kind. Okay. Ooh, a lightning bolt spell? Okay. And then what is that right there? Flood? Okay. And then rain. Gotcha. I would like some rain. Rain would be nice. We've got the mirror spell that they wanted me to have. Uh, but anyways, as I was saying, my observations. There's little polish things. I think the game is actually very, very charming to look at. But when you go up and down between levels, the game does like a chunk, 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 chunk thing instead of having like a smooth transition of the camera. That's the first thing that jumped out at me because when you're moving horizontally, everything is very, very smooth. But when you're climbing and going down ladders, it chunks. And I'd prefer for that to be smooth as well. I do think the spell effects could be slowed down a little bit and they could be punched up a little bit, both audio and visual wise, uh, just to make them feel more more impactful because it takes you so much of a chunk of a day just to get a fireball or a lightning bolt spell that I think that's kind of like, you know, uh, it should be visually meaningful, I guess. Uh, but other than that, like, I think they're on a really, really good path with this game. I, I have high hopes for this title. Like I said, I'm not adverse to deck building card games. I'm not. It's just that, like, I'm kind of burned out on, you know, Slay the Spire type deck building card games. Just kind of exhausted with that idea of gameplay. Oh yeah, I figured out what the portals are too. The portals are what happen. The enemies spawn out of the portals if you have a castle that has no way for the enemy to get inside. And so once you... I figured this out after the video was recorded. I made an edit specifically to point it out so that people would understand the portal. But anyways, the portal opens up inside your base if you create a base that has no access points for the AI to get into to destroy your base. That's it. That's the entire thing, and then the second you add a door that lets them get inside, the portal will go away. And so anyways, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we're playing a little bit of Dwarvish Skykeep. 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that this game looked meaningful or like something that you might want to play. If not, hang tight. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. I'll see y'all later, and thank you for joining me.